we have an electrical system that I've just built. And uh, you can see it's built in our um, extruded aluminum box. Um, this is not 8020. A lot of people commonly call, refer to it as 8020. It'd be kind of like calling tissue paper Kleenex. It's the most recognized brand, but there's actually a lot of other companies that make the extruded aluminum. Um, the company we buy it from um, is probably close to half the price of 8020 when you factor in all of the hardware and the extruded aluminum bars. Um, if it's not half, it's at least 30 to 40 percent less. And uh, they're really good to work with. We've been buying for them for a couple of years. And uh, I just bought enough 80 of this, I would say 80, 20, of this uh, material to do two vans and it shipped the very next day. So they're really, really fast shipping and good to work with. Um, I'll link to the, their, them in the description. Uh, so this is the electrical system. And this is a little bit different than the ones we've done in the past. This is a 24 volt system. The dead giveaway is the 24 volt um, inverter charger. The, um, this little Orion converter is a, a 24 to 12 volt converter. And then these Orion chargers are 12, 24, 15. So we did two of these and uh, it takes the 12 volts from the van and then steps it up to 24 volts for this system. Now there's a lot of reasons to go with a 24 volt system. Um, the biggest reason that we have not done it up until now is um, we haven't had any big devices um, that are 24 volt. Uh, we used, have been using the Dometic RTX 2000 air conditioner, which only comes in a 12 volt in the US. Uh, you can get it in 24 volt in Europe and uh, I believe in Australia and maybe some other countries. But the 12 volt version is the only one available. So it really just for us hasn't made much sense to do a 24 volt system. But we, uh, starting with these next, we're working on four vans right now. Uh, we're doing the um, Nomadic Cooling X2 uh, air conditioner, which comes in a 12, 24, or 48 volts. So we're doing the 24 volts in these. So it makes a lot of sense when you're doing, when you can do that, um, to run 24 volts because we'll run that on 24 volts and then all the other things will just step down to 12 volts using this Orion converter right here. So I'll kind of walk through exactly how this whole thing works. So the batteries will be in this bay right here and then the power, the, um, they'll be wired to Battleborn um, GC3, Game Changer 3, 270 amp hour batteries. So two of those for a total of 540 amp hours at 12 volts, but we'll wire those in series, which will make them 24 volts. So you can see here, here's where the batteries live. They're right behind the wheel well on the passenger side. And then the whole, um, that mechanical box will sit over the wheel well and come just in front of it and um, enclose the battery. So you can see we've got these batteries ready to go, uh, positive and negative positive and negative. So these will be wired in series, the positive and negative, positive and negative here, and then to the system, to that switch that I showed you. So the 24 volts will come into this switch right here. And this is a Victron link shunt. So here's our 300 amp um, ANL fuse. Power goes through that fuse. Um, and then it goes into the links distributor right here. And uh, we have all of our different devices fused through the link distributor. And the links distributor is just a really clean way to organize everything. You could do it with bus bars and fuse blocks and things like that, but this is just a really sleek way that we think is well worth it. So the first one here is the solar charge controller, you can see here. And then the next one is we have the two Orions connected here. We ran the electrical from the vehicle starter battery, and then we'll just bring it up through um, the, the wall of the van, right through the wall of the van right here to come up. It'll run up and connect. We'll go to a um, little stud and then branch it off to the two Orions. And what we have found is that with 540 amp hours of batteries, the 30, one 30 amp Orion just really, it takes a long time. If, you were, if your batteries were completely depleted, it would take 20 hours of driving to charge those. Now you're rarely gonna be at zero, but if you're at 
in the morning and you're it's going to take 10 hours to fully charge those so if it's cloudy and you're not able to get a lot of solar then you're not going to be able to charge your batteries all the way and we have had people some of our customers who have had trouble getting their battery you know they start it maybe at 100 percent at the beginning of a trip and then after a couple of days they're they're down you know they drop down and then they drive a little it comes back up but maybe they drop to 70 and then it charges it back to 85 or 90 then they drop to 60 and then only charge to 75 and then down to 50 and back up to 65 and slowly if they're not plugging into shore power they're having a hard time charging those batteries because 540 amperes, amp hours is quite a bit. So you doing the dual Orions just doubles the capacity, makes it so that you, if you're at 50%, you could charge those in five hours of driving. So with that and your solar, it really is going to help a lot. So that's why we've gone to the two Orions. So, th so there's the, the two Orions connected there. And then this one is going to the Orion converter which is right here. So, so we're running here into the converter. We'll come out of the converter with these two wires and we'll connect them into our DC fuse block. And then the last one is going to our inverter. And so you can see the positive and negative coming here and going into the bottom of the inverter. And then these coming out of the inverter are our AC out and that'll be connected to the AC, um, AC uh, breaker panel. Then this last one, we won't hook this up until it gets into the van, but that's for the shore power. We'll run the, the wires out of this um, and to a, a plug on the outside of the van. Now, some of the advantages to a 24 volt system is that you can use smaller wire. So where with a 12 volt system with the same setup, we would have to be using four aught wire, which is pretty big. Um, with this system, we can use one aught wire for the main batteries. So just as a comparison, this is a four out wire. This is a one out wire. So um, one one advantage of the one out wire is just a lot easier to work with. This four out is really stiff um, and hard to you know in such a small area to make some of these bends is can be really tough with the big four out wire. The one out is a lot easier to uh, bend. You can see I could never do that with the four out. Um, and then not only just the, the um, maneuverability or the adjustability of it, but also it's a lot less expensive. Um, the four out wire is like, I think it's about 12 to $14 a foot for the really high grade uh, marine grade wire. And for the same wire in one aught, I think it's about four or $5 a foot. So it's quite a bit cheaper. The lugs are a lot cheaper. You can see this big old lug compared to these lugs. Um, they're just a lot less expensive. So all of the components um, in a 24 volt system, you can save some money there. Now you do have to buy this little converter, but that converter is only about 120 bucks. So even with the cost of that, um, you're, you're gonna save money on all the wiring and the components. This system will all be monitored with a Servo GX. We love that. That'll be mounted over above the batteries and then have a touch screen um, mounted up in the cabin. I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the tools um, that are really, I feel, necessary to, to do a, be able to do a really clean job. Or I think it's really important to have everything look clean and organized, have really good crimps on everything. You can see we have the shrink wrap on all of our connections that are going into these um, Victron components. We use ferrules. Here's, there's a ferrule and we use those, just makes a much cleaner, um, better connection. Uh, in a, the, All the marine grade wire is stranded wire. And so if you're putting stranded wire and then screwing a screw down into it, the wire just kind of can go like this and make a not, not a very good connection. But when you use a ferrule, then the screw is going right into the ferrule and really makes a solid connection. So we use ferrules and everything. And what I found this crimper right here, is a ferrule crimper. And this is like the only one I've been able to find that goes all the way down to six gauge. Now that's important because most of these components, you're using six gauge wire um, to connect all these things. We do use the one aught for the inverter and for the batteries, but a lot of the other stuff is using six gauge. And then um, the, the solar is using 10 gauge coming in, but you'll, you'll be doing a lot of six gauge crimping. So this, these uh, ferrule crimpers right here will do six gauge. And the other thing that's nice about them 
is they do a square crimp. So another thing that you're gonna need is something to strip the wires. And while I love these strippers, uh, they're, they're awesome, but they will not do below about 12 gauge wire. And so you need something to be able to uh, strip that 10 or six uh, or smaller wire. And th these will go down to six gauge. So this is some six gauge wire and it works really well that way and just pull it out off. And then the ferrules, this will go right on there. And then these ferrule crimpers, one thing I love about them is that they make a square crimp. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know how well you can see that, but it is square, which is nice because the, all of these, where these go in are square. And so you can put that in there and the screw is gonna go right against the flat side and make a really solid connection. So I'm gonna link to all of these tools that I'm talking about in the description, but these are awesome ferrule crimpers. These are made by Southwire really good strippers for six and 10 gauge wire. It'll do from 12 to six, but I mainly use it for my 10 gauge solar wires and then my six gauge, all the different uh, connections that I'm making with a six gauge wire. This is a really nice crimper that I like. So these will do anywhere from one out wire all the way down to eight gauge wire. And so this is really nice for all of the lugs. And it's nice to be able to do this like with four out wire, you've either got to use a hydraulic or a um, bigger um, crimper that sits on a tabletop. And it's really hard to do it like with the wires in place. One of the things that's nice about this when you're working with one out wire is to get just the exact length of something, you can run the wire, you can connect it on one end, run the wire where it's gonna be, measure it up and cut it, and then just crimp it right in place. Crimp the, the, the lug on there and attach it. And so these, I really like for those. If you're doing the bigger four out wire, then you're gonna need something like this. Um, this is an awesome crimper. I've had three or four different ones. This is my favorite one for doing four out wire. This will do the one out as well, but you don't, with, with one out, you can get away with this, which is really nice. The next thing that's really nice to have is just some little nippers. And these are made by Knipex, which is a German company, makes really high quality tools. And uh, these are really nice uh, for just cutting little, little small wires or uh, just, you know, if you need to clean up some of the stranded wires, things like that, these are really nice. Victron specs out the torque for all of these different components. And when they're, you're connecting, tightening these down on metal, um, it's 14 nano, or not, it's 14 newton meters, not nanometers, 14 newton meters. And the ones on the plastic are 10 newton meters. All of, the, all of the ones with screws, so all of these where the ferrules go, are 14 inch pounds. And so this is a nice little torque wrench that's not very expensive that you can set to both Newton meters and inch pounds. Um, and then this one is nice screwdriver torque wrench, um, or, or torque screwdriver uh, that you can set. And I just, everything is 14 inch pounds that we use here, so I just, have a mark there where I can set it to 14 inch pounds and then torque all those down. So if you're thinking about doing an electrical system and if you decide you wanna go with a 24 volt system, it is a little bit more complicated, but it can really give you some benefits. It can save you some money. It also can run more efficiently because when you double the voltage, you cut the amperage in half. So the current flowing through the wires is what creates heat and heat can, make it so that you're not getting a, as efficient transfer of the electricity. And so the, the 24 volt system can just operate a little bit more efficiently. And then you can also save some money in the components. And then it's just easier to work with those smaller wires. So it's something you might want to consider. Now, if you're looking to have an electrical system built for your van, we do that. Um, we've had customers come in and only have us do the electrical. We've had customers bring vans just to have us do the plumbing. So we do that as well. So that's a wrap for this video. If you got value out of this video, give us a thumbs up. That really helps us with YouTube and um, tells them to show it to even more people. Thanks for watching. Jeff, Thrive Vans, drive on. See ya.